did have a, a whole separate course on branches early this year. This course um, training video is also available from the SLS uh, website um, that for your viewing, along with some questions and answers. But today we're just going to have a little bit of um, a re rehash of that because we talked about exchange today. When you first get Oliver, uh, most schools will get two branches, library and school resources. Library is used for your resources that are physically located in the library itself. School resources is for those items that are not located in the library. They might be held in department collections or in a different room perhaps. So at least when people look up resources in the catalogue, they can see it's either in the library, which would show as a green tick, or not the library, which would show as a different coloured tick. I think it's orange or yellow. When students search, they can only see library resources. That's the same for all, but as well, they can just see library resources. But when staff search, they can see both library and school resources, and there's different colours. Again, you just need to let staff know what the different colour ticks mean so they, they know what they're looking at. Um, the branch information is useful when you're running things like overdue notices. You can run overdue notices to say, I just want things from the library branch. I just want things from the school resources branch, perhaps. And uh, one, one example where um, branches, uh, the school resources branch is used a lot is for textbooks. Um, it's quite useful to have your, your textbooks completely separate so the students don't get confused with their search results. Um, and a quick and easy way of moving resources to a different branch is to use the exchange function. We looked at that exchange function earlier today. Um, and you don't need to actually physically scan all the barcodes to change that. I'll just go over that process again. I did cover it briefly early today with Exchange. I'll just go over that again. So let's say you've got a, a large group of resources that are in a separate collection that you'd like to move to a separate branch, the school resources branch typically. You go to Cataloging and Copies. Now you could use multi-barcode search, but that would involve physically scanning the items themselves. Uh, you could search instead search for a collection, and the example I usually use is the textbooks um, collection. Let's say I move my teacher reference resources. My map my teacher reference resources are kept in the departments rather than kept in the library, perhaps. So select the collection, search for them using the magnifying glass, and the copies are displayed there. Then I can use the exchange function on the left hand side on the menu, and I could change the branch to be school resources. There's no need to remember where they're from because they're actually being permanently moved to the school resources area. And if it's going to be a permanent change, I also don't need to specify a branch expiry date. I could then start that and all those resources will be moved to the different branch. I'll do that now. So now the teacher reference resources are in the school resources branch instead. So when I look at those resources in my searching, they show up with a different colored tick. The savage shows a green tick for available in the library. Orange ticks available in another branch. They're available in the school resources. So they're not in the physical in the library, they're in the school resources in the teacher reference. There might be another teacher reference room, perhaps, perhaps it's attached to the staff room or similar. Okay, so that, that's um, just a, a very brief overview of branches. The other area where branches are useful is uh, when you're doing searching, if you're searching your resources area, right down the bottom of the screen, you can say, just show me things in the school resources branch. We can combine a search what you have in a certain topic in this particular branch. The other place you could use branches is in your overdue notices. If I go to the circulation menu and choose overdues. With overdue notices you can specify who overdue notices are for and what they're for. So for staff overdue notices, or any overdue notices for that matter, one of the options you've got when you're viewing the details is to change the resource selection. In other words, which resources would you like to select? 
If, if there's a cross to spider means, consider anything. If you edit the resource selection, one of the options you've got is branch. So you might say, just run it over, do you notice, for all the school resources resources that the, the, the staff have out online. When we click on save, a tick is displayed next to resource selection. And in fact, one item would appear. Run one says one item would appear. So a borrow selection would restrict it to just staff in this case. And the resource section would just said school resources. So you probably even rename the notes to be staff school resources overdues or staff library overdues if you want to have them separately. So that's just another example where branches can be used. Okay, that concludes the content of today's training.